can't wear it the whole time. <laughs> I've been a fan of Star Wars since third grade. Everything from the movies, the books, the video games, the toys, even the occasional mailbox. Uh, but I never really got into the community. I mean, sure, I had some friends that liked the movies, and even a few of them knew what the chances were of successfully navigating an asteroid field. But I never really got into the larger Star Wars community that existed. But all that changed last summer. I was able to attend Star Wars Celebration 5 in Florida. And for the first time ever, I got to see what it was like to be a part of the larger Star Wars community of fans. But how can this change the world? Well, there was four things over the course of the four-day event that I noticed about myself and about communities in general that I think if I applied to my life and ideally your lives as well, I think we have a shot at changing the world. The first thing I noticed, people were genuinely excited to learn. I mean, George Lucas was there, there was a ton of speakers and panels, and people were excited about it. Um, this was the main event that Jon Stewart hosted, and people were lining up the night before to see him. Now, I got in line at 3 a.m., and I was the last 25 people to get into the theater. I mean, coffee couldn't even keep us awake. We waited in line for seven hours. Now, people would cheer when they learned something new at this thing. I mean, they announced at the, one of the video game panels that Yoda was gonna make a cameo in the Force Unleashed 2 video game. And the place went nuts. I mean, I couldn't even get a clear picture. I was clapping so hard. <laughs> now, the second thing I noticed, you'd think that with thousands of people, horrible humidity, um, seven hour lines, the Hallmark special edition ornaments selling out right as you get to the booth, you'd think that people would be kind of angry, but they weren't. I mean, people were so friendly. They just wanted to hang out and talk and have a drink, like Moof Talk here. We were just all so excited to be able to share in our collective love of Star Wars that we didn't want to bring the party down. I mean, even the Darth Sith Lord Ewok wanted to take a picture with me. I mean, people were just genuinely nice, and despite any inconveniences, people didn't want to be negative. They wanted to stay positive. Now, the third thing I noticed was that for four days, this convention center was transformed into a place where we could be ourselves. We could dress up in costume, we could have plastic lightsaber battles, we could argue nitpicky, nitpicky bits of trivia, we could get super geeky tattoos, we could spend hundreds of dollars on overpriced merchandise but not feel guilty about it. I mean, it was a judgment-free zone. We could all just indulge in our unified love of Star Wars and be totally okay with it. These were business people, CEOs, fast food workers, interior designers. I mean, I'm sure that woman in blue or both of them are small business owners with two children. I mean, but we could leave that all behind and we could be the action figure collector and the comic book writer. Now, the fourth thing I noticed happened more after Celebration 5, and it involves seven-year-old Katie. Now, she is a Star Wars fan. She took her Star Wars water bottle to school with her, and a bunch of the boys in her class made fun of her. They said Star Wars was just for boys. Well, her mom wrote a blog post about this, and the Star Wars community came to the rescue. And they reminded Katie and the bullies that there are definitely female Star Wars fans out there. <laughs> It's kind of went viral within the Star Wars community. Some of the actors got on board, some of the Star Wars bloggers, and they created a Twitter hashtag, a Facebook event, all in support of Katie and celebrating the wonderful diversity of Star Wars fans. So whether it's saving you from seven-year-old bullies or rescuing you from giant attacking Ackley and Geonosian death arenas, I feel that the, the Star Wars community has your back. And this is something that I think all communities have. So, how do we save the world? Well, I don't think it has to be that scary. I mean, you just have to find a community that you're passionate about and shares your passions. It could be Star Wars, it could be stamp collecting, it could be wine. But just remember these four things. You have to be excited to learn. What can you cheer about when you learn something new? Be nice, it sounds silly and stupid, but it's kind of hard. Be yourself <laughs> and Support each other and find a community that can support you. So I'm going to be in line for Celebration 6 in a couple of years, so I hope to see you all there. But if not there, at the very least, find a community that shares your passion and take that community environment into your everyday lives. And I think if we all do that, we have a shot at changing the world.